wealth of experience. And as an you know, experienced HR legal person who is really uh, been a mentor to many people, in this current climate that we have found ourselves, where there's a lot of change that is being thrust on us, least of which is the fact that we now have to walk across boundaries. Like um, I think it was uh, Mrs. Jibril that said that, uh, and now I'm not sure whether she wants me to call her Mrs. now. I have to be careful. Um, <laughs> He's just... <laughs> <laughs> and 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 so just so I don't lose the point, how can with your experience and having transitioned through the full spectrum, how can what will be the the key nuggets that you can share with us on how to manage those transitions because they will happen. So for some of us who are still actively engaged in the workplace, formal workplaces, I mean, how do we do that? For those who are just about to enter into it and are looking at, mm, how am I going to navigate this potential minefield? How am I going to take the maximum? What advice would you have for us as we go into the uncertainty of the working together in different ways, the collaboration, the environment where we no longer sit side by side and see ourselves every morning? How do we, uh, 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 what would you share with leaders on that? Thank you very much, Akin. I think first and foremost, uh, I appreciate the points made by Yomi and uh, Yinka with their permission because we already had an icebreaker before now. Uh, the point is this, you take who you are to the workspace, not the other way around. Whoever you are, if you're arrogant, you would like that even in the workspace. If you are pleasant, if you are going to be cantankerous and you're going to be argumentative and you're going to be a difficult person, you could be a difficult person and you could have a difficult report and you're reporting to somebody too who is difficult. And what I say is that I learned that. I learned that I was privileged and I think it was a two day training. The one thing I took away from that training, even though it was about communication is that you, it's easier to understand that you're managing the reports, those who report to you. But hey, you're managing, in fact, the, the task is for you to manage the uh, people on the up level. And it's not about age. You can find yourself in the same age bracket. You can find yourself even reporting to somebody who is much younger. Number one, who are you? What kind of a person are you? What takes you, what sets you off? Don't give what you don't want to get. So it's not about calling. I think it's so, the thing about calling somebody first name or the other is about the relationship. It's about how you perceive yourself and how you speak to yourself. Because if you consider, I asked you a question, you know, at the back end. I say it's interesting you brought only the females. And I'm glad you shared the reason why you brought females to this panel. Now I'm going to say to you, in the workspace, you are neither male nor female when you're being employed. You are neither married nor married. But occasionally, you will have a situation that pigeonholes you. Either you pigeonhole yourself or somebody else pigeonholes you. I share my experience. I'd worked in two places where I, had, I was just employed for who I was. And then I went for the job interview, employment interview with my employer whom I spent 34 years with in public service. And interestingly, the only reason why they were not going to employ me was that I was female. I was actually told at the interview panel that you see, we don't employ females for legal departments. And I was curious why, oh, they travel. We're not sure that women can handle that. This was in the 80s, this was mid 80s. So the point is this, who are you? And I think that question, that interaction, that conversation stuck with me for my 30, over three decades, that I'm going to be the best I can. You're not going to get away. I'm, I'm not, you're not going to be able to pigeonhole me and say I'm female. 
So when you're talking about intergenerational leadership, number one, you may be a boomer, but that doesn't mean that uh, other people won't get along with you. And strangely, well, from my perspective, what I got, which I shared with a number of people, even after I left work, it's a balance. It's a balance. You're swinging sideways and you're trying to find a balance. Who am I? What's the best in this situation? What's the best in this time, at this moment? Am I going to empathize? Okay, I'll give you this example. I worked in public service, what we call agencies, not the civil service, there's a difference. And those ones strive between public sector and private sector. We even call ourselves, we are labeled as public servants. And that's a big difference from civil service. Now, the NMPCs, the CBNs, the FIRS, the public service. And you'll agree with me that sometimes you are not able to see them as civil service. You, you see what they do because they bring in some commercial elements into what they are set up to do. So this young lady comes up and comes to me and says, I need to take some time off. I said, go on leave. She had discussed it with her branch manager and everybody said, go upstairs to the next level and talk about it. So she tells me she wants to go to a reality, she wants to go for a reality show. I'm like, okay. My designation then was regional manager. You need to calm down. This is not the regular thing. You've got to really find what she wants and see what could happen. So I asked her why she wants to do that. She said, oh, she gave me a story of how she wants to do that. And I knew that it was unlikely that she would take, she'd be able to get time off. So I said to her, okay, but let's look at it. You're not going to, what if you're not given time off? Say, I know I can only take my leave, but I need three months. And I knew she wasn't going to get the time off because we play by rules and public services a lot by rules. You should be able to give A what you're giving to B. It's not like a small business where you say, okay, or you can find a locum or you can say, oh, this is good for our brand. So she did put her request in and uh, I endorsed it because I was willing to encourage her on a personal note. I wasn't going to frustrate her by saying I'll try to know at my level. And that time I was no longer an HR guest, but I understood. So I let it go. And then it comes back and they say, oh, no, you can't. And she said to me, oh, thank you very much, ma. At least I tried. And then I asked her what was the reason, what was at play for her? It was like she would love to do something in that sphere more than being in a eight to four, strictly regulated. As time went on, oh, she broke all the rules. But as time went on, I did encourage her. I said, if that's what you want to do, why won't you go do it? At the end of the day, maybe by a year, she actually pulled out totally and went away. So I'm still going to say, how adaptable are we as individuals, both the boomers and the hygienists, the ones who live in the digital age, they call themselves digital natives. And those rules, those uh, rules, not in the workplace, how, we were grown, how we were socialized in our communities. And public service is a place where you don't even call people by name. You address them by their responsibility. Oh, DGM legal, oh, uh, GM finance. Even when I'm talking to my contemporary, that is what is acceptable. So I'm gonna say to everyone, identify yourself first. When you move into a workspace or a different type, before, because if I have to work in, very, very uh, uh, workspace in the private sector that is very fluid. I'll have to adjust myself to that. But I'm going to say it is what we call situational leadership, whether for you as a top person or whether for the uh, employee, you're going to have to manage your bosses, for want of a better word, bosses I'll call them. Thank you. Let me stop here. Thank you so very much. I'm, 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 <laughs> I was almost blown off my chair. A civil servant wants to do a reality show. 
that would be almost impossible some generations ago. But I like the fact that you mentioned the fact that adaptability is a key. And as I look at you know, the literature around generational theory and how these generations have been carved out and the defining elements of each of these generational differences, I see that for us as individuals, as leaders, that's a critical element, being willing to adapt to those changes. The same way we're adapting to changes around technology, for instance. I mean, before 2020, how many of us would even send ourselves on online courses? Today, it is almost impossible to do anything without it being one, having one element of online. Although some of our regulators are still fighting the online space, they will, they will see the light at some point. So there are changes that are coming and that level of adaptability that is required is, is, is crucial.